Now at 11 on Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. Unrest continues in the streets of Baltimore as the first night of a citywide curfew begins. All of this following the death of a 25-year-old black man who suffered a spinal cord injury while in police custody. Also, a social media post could be to blame for a riot that injured several police officers. What a UNCG professor is saying about the online outreach. And could this all happen here in North Carolina? What legislators are doing so it doesn't. You're watching Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. Citywide curfew is underway in the city of Baltimore. It doesn't seem like everyone is in a hurry to get off the streets. You're looking live at a picture from Baltimore right now. Uh, many of the streets are mostly clear. Police kind of established lines to enforce this curfew against the defiant people. Why don't we show you some video? This is from about 30 minutes ago. Police uh, started advancing protesters after they had bottles thrown at them. Uh, they threw flashbangs into the crowd. A helicopter over the protesters told the crowd to go home or be arrested. Riot police also fired pepper pellets. Hundreds of police and National Guardsmen are patrolling the streets, hoping to prevent another violent outbreak. This city remains under a state of emergency following yesterday's rioting. At least 20 police officers were injured in the mayhem. Those riots erupted just hours after a funeral for Freddie Gray, a 25-year-old black man who suffered a fatal spinal cord injury while in police custody. Commissioner Anthony Batts is responding to critics questioning why police didn't respond faster out there. Do you want people using uh, force on 14, 15, 16 year old kids that are out there? And they're, they're old enough to know better. They're old enough to know not to do those things. They're old enough to be accountable, but they're still kids, unfortunately. And so we had to take that into account while we were out there. Baltimore's mayor is backtracking on her use of the word thugs. Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake says her little anger, a little anger, got the better of her. A social media post could be to blame for sparking yesterday's riots. Our Kristen Drummond talked to a UNCG professor who explains the impact of this kind of online outreach. The mayhem in Baltimore, all likely sparked by a social media post. A flyer posted online Monday encouraged high school students to purge a mall. What we're starting to see now is the manifestation of that kind of dissemination of information through social media. UNCG professor Dr. Omar Ali says social media has become a powerful tool for communication. What can be produced with social media can be as we see violence, but it can also produce a lot of empathy and positive outcomes. In February, social media was the place to go for support after the shooting deaths of three Muslim college students in Chapel Hill. But Monday's protest in Baltimore led to destruction. What this ultimately was, these violent uh, responses were, were criminal acts. But it's at the same time, I think one has to always appreciate the fact that young people are trying to express themselves. And maybe for some of them, in their minds, this was a way that they felt that they could get their voices heard. Tuesday, 17-year-old Tony Cleveland from Greensboro tried to get his voice heard but was unsuccessful. Police charged him with inciting a riot by using social media to encourage followers to loot stores and attack police this coming weekend. The post has since been taken down, but Elise says teens across the country may be sending a message. From their perspective, they feel on the one hand that they're under attack, that young people who look like them around the country are being attacked, so they weren't doing this in sympathy. On the other hand, they're just young people, and young people do some things that are just sort of nonsensical. Whatever the reason, Greensboro police say they're taking proactive measures to prevent a riot from happening in the triad. In Greensboro, Kristen Drummond, Time Warner Cable News. Under North Carolina law, it is a misdemeanor for anyone to willfully incite or urge a person to engage in a riot. In light of everything that is happening in Baltimore, legislators want a bill they say will increase police accountability to move forward. This bill prohibits profiling of any kind. It calls for data to be collected on who's being stopped and why. They hope this will either prove or disprove discrimination and keep civil unrest at a minimum. That we want to be proactive in our efforts in North Carolina to make sure that we don't see those incidents that happen, say, in Ferguson or in Baltimore. Right now, Bill 193 has yet to be assigned to a committee.
Nearly 100 people were evacuated from the Oaks apartments in Thomasville after flames erupted around 6 this morning. When they got on the scene, they found heavy smoke and a second story apartment fully engulfed in flames and that quickly spread to other units. Many people say they helped neighbors and loved ones escape the blaze. And he came back in just real quick and said, grab the baby, get a blanket, let's get out of here if the building's on fire. And about 50 firefighters to get the flames under control. The Salvation Army and the Red Cross were quick to respond following that early morning apartment fire. The agencies provided food, blankets, and socks to dozens of victims at a Salvation Army facility across the street. They also comforted many who escaped the fire but had no one to turn to. You know, they were all in shock, and it's just mainly giving them love, letting them know we care, that we're here for them. The Red Cross set up a temporary shelter at a local church. The agency will work with local community partners to find new places to live. We continue to roll out our exclusive Time Warner Cable News poll. Tonight we focus on Hillary Clinton versus some of the top Republican contenders. Tim Boyum has a look at the numbers. While Florida Senator Marco Rubio topped the Republican primary list in our poll, he does not lead the field in a head-to-head -head matchup against Hillary Clinton. Right now, Clinton leads all Republicans, but former Florida Governor Jeb Bush comes closest to a statistical dead heat with the former Secretary of State. Clinton bests Bush by a 45 to 43 margin with 12 percent undecided. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul trails Clinton by four percentage points with 10 percent undecided, while Marco Rubio and Texas Senator Ted Cruz trail her by five percent each. Clinton has her largest lead against Scott Walker with a 48 to 39 margin and 13 percent undecided. So I think what we're seeing here is a, a wide open field among the Republicans and the potential of anybody really to kind of come in and grasp the, 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 the mantle of being the front runner status. We also put Clinton up against some other Republican where she leads by just 2 percent. 14% were undecided in that question. You know, I think that no matter who the candidates are, uh, unless one, uh, unless there's some sort of collapse amongst for that candidate when the general election starts, there's some big scandal or something. Uh, I think we should expect North Carolina again to be very close, uh, but also to be more Republican than the nation as a whole. The closeness of all these matchups should not come as a surprise when you consider President Obama won North Carolina by less than a point in 2008 and Mitt Romney won by just two points in 2012. Tim Boyum, Time Order Cable News. Tomorrow night, the poll results will feature approval ratings for the governor and the two U.S. senators. It will also ask voters how they feel lawmakers are working with the governor and vice versa. A historic day for our country as the Supreme Court heard opening arguments for legalizing same-sex marriage. The courts could answer two important questions. The first, do same-sex couples have the constitutional right to marry? The second, do states have to recognize lawful marriages from other states? Depending on how the court rules, gay marriage could be legal in all 50 states, or marriage bans could be reinstated in states that have legalized it, including North Carolina. A decision is expected to come in July. Railway crossings in one Alamance County town will get a close look over the next year. DOT is doing the study in Nevin to address safety concerns after a fatal accident four months ago. Katie Husband takes a look at what this will cover and what officials hope to accomplish. Four months ago, when an Amtrak train rolled through Mevin and took the life of a driver, city leaders wanted something done. Everybody thought it was worth uh, working with NCDOT and uh, Norfolk Southern and uh, North Carolina Railroad to figure out, you know, are there things that could be done to improve the crossings to, to make them safe for the traveling public. NCDOT will be conducting a traffic separation study at all seven railroad crossings in the city. Traffic officials say they will be collecting inventory data of each crossing. What kind of protections at the crossing now? What kind of vehicles cross the crossing? Are they, um, what, what is the emergency vehicle use of the crossing? Uh, school bus use, uh, uh, all, of the, all of the users. City officials say there's no predetermined outcome, but to help keep the citizens of Mebane safe, they need to start working with various agencies to improve the safety. The North Carolina Railroad, Norfolk Southern, NCDOT, uh, most of this is not city streets. Uh, we're here to help things get better, but we have to work with all of those different agencies to uh, try to make that happen. 
The study hasn't begun, but DOT officials already see one potential solution in the final master plan that will be developed. One thing that Mebane does not have is a great separation of bridge over or under the railroad, so that would be something that would be uh, you know, better to have there in the community uh, for, for an option. Alternatives that could prevent further accidents. In Mebane, Katie Husband, Time Warner Cable News. There's no cost to the city of Mebane to do the study. NCDOT says it will take anywhere from 12 to 18 months to finish. A new study may offer Alzheimer's patients and their caregivers some relief in fighting the disease. Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center is one of the only hospitals in North Carolina participating in what's called the Noble Study. The drug works by helping to protect nerve endings from Alzheimer's spread. If it gets FDA approval, it will be the first drug of its kind to hit the market in a decade. That has participants and their families feeling optimistic. It, it does give you hope to know that we're finally getting funding and research and you know the opportunities to, to do some things and try to try to find something that's going to benefit Alzheimer's patients. The study lasts a little more than a year. To see if you or someone you know is eligible to participate, you can visit our website. That is twcnews.com. From our crews across the state, here's tonight's Carolina Minute. A plane from Raleigh-Durham International Airport was forced to make an emergency landing today. The Republic flight operated by United Airlines made the emergency stop at Philadelphia International Airport around 3.50. Officials say one of the plane's two engines caught fire. They say the plane landed safely. No one was injured. The State House has approved a bill that changes the way schools are graded in North Carolina. Currently, the grade is 80% based on student test scores, 20% on academic growth. This new proposal changes that to 50-50. The proposal now goes to the Senate for consideration. UNC Chapel Hill and the Smith family have launched a fundraising campaign to honor the life and legacy of Dean Smith. The campaign raises money for the Dean E. Smith Opening Doors Fund. It helps outstanding college undergraduates from lower income families and professionals in education and social work to pursue advanced degrees. These stories are more available anytime on Time Warner Cable News. The search is on for a peacock that flew the coop from the Greensboro Science Center. It's one of four new additions to the center that decided to venture outside to check out the city. The bird has been missing for a couple of weeks and was seen today in a local neighborhood. One of the curators at the center says there are plenty of bugs and insects to eat in yards, as well as plenty of tree cover to roost under at night. So the peacock really isn't in any hurry to come home. They say to catch the bird, timing is everything. So if you see the peacock, call them immediately and give a specific address and a specific location. A cheer squad from Alamance County will be in the national spotlight this weekend. They compete at the 2015 Summit All-Star Championships. Cheer Zone All-Stars in Graham won their bid to the invitation-only event by competing all year long. Three of Cheer Zone's six teams are headed to Orlando on Thursday. They held a send-off celebration for family and friends tonight. All-Star Cheer is not your typical cheerleading, they say. It's a high-powered acrobatic routine that pushes athletes to tumble and stunt while adding in dance elements. All three teams are scheduled to take the floor Friday afternoon. Finally, it was a dream come true today for a six-year-old cancer patient from Winston-Salem. Make-A-Wish and the North Carolina Zoo teamed up to make Parker Gilliard a zookeeper for a day. Zookeepers gave him a backstage pass, letting him get up close and personal with the animals. To feed the animals, we get to help train them, and we get to pet some of them. Parker was treated for Hodgkin's lymphoma with months of chemo treatments. That is our time. Thank you for joining us. Jimmy Kimmel Live is next. Time Warner Cable News is available around the clock and on your schedule.